I'm actually a reporter out here in Charleston, Huntington, West Virginia. Um, and so I'm asking one for our viewers out here, one for the people uh, going back a little bit. How did playing at Marshall help build a solid foundation for your NFL career and ultimately leading you here coaching in Super Bowl 55? Well, one of the best things that ever happened to me at Marshall was the time that I went to Marshall. Uh, it was really before all the college football started just going really fast and just holding cards up and just playing all that, you know. So we had to learn it differently. We had to, the game was played differently during those times. Even though at Marshall we was a pass-oriented system and a pass-oriented team, we had to know what all those spots were on defense. We couldn't just go fast. So we had to slow down. I learned a lot of football being there at Marshall, and I also had Chad Pennington there. So I had the guy who they was calling the best quarterback in college football. I had the opportunity to learn from, to learn how to play the position, to learn how to have awareness and understanding of where everyone needs to be and where the, where the defenders won't be. So it was a blessing for me of how we learned football during those times at Marshall. It was, it was old school, you know, one-on-one -on -one football that you had to learn and had to understand to even give yourself a chance to have any sort of success. We'll go over to Therese Paler. Oh. Hey, Byron, how you doing today, man? How you doing? Great. Um, hey, look, uh, kind of piggybacking on Mike's question. Um, curious, what's it been like working with Tom Brady? You know, he's an accomplished guy. That, guys go back a ways a little bit you played around the same time just um what's it been like working with tom on a day-to-day -day basis as far as formulating the game plan and also have a quick follow-up for you um after their answer well it's exciting really to, to work with you know the guy that they call the best to ever you know play his position uh i mean obviously he's very aware he's a smart football player he's been in every situation and, and you know i get an opportunity to work with him after he's already done 20 years of this, right? So it's been kind of fun to just learn from him, uh, him to learn from me. What's been the most amazing thing about this whole thing is that the way his approach of it, he came in and he's he's told me from day one, just coach me, let me know what you want. Obviously we work together from a game plan standpoint, but he's really a guy that I'm gonna go out and execute this play regardless of what you call at a high level. Uh, and let's just try to play our best football, execute at, at a high level. Kind of what I was saying earlier about, he, I mean, he, he learned the game the old school way too. So he's not a young guy that's really just been going fast. He's a guy that's been around a lot of different types of football. We were just talking about like back in the day, if you, you know, you had 26 attempts and 204 yards. That was a huge day most Sundays. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that was a huge day most Sundays when, you know, when I first got into the league and when he first got into the league. And we just amazed at how much the game has changed in that yeah, time. I, yeah, I hear you. Have you found that, you know, Tom wants hard coaching on one and two? Can you kind of give us a a little bit of an idea how the game plans come together because you got a guy like Brady. I'm sure he'll have some input, but I also know he wants hard coaches. So whatever light you could share there would be great, man. Oh yeah. He wanted to be coach hard. He wanted to be coach. He wants you to let him know when he's not doing the right things. And you know, that's the easy part for me because you, you want to help. You want to put the player in the best position to have success. And if you don't coach guys like guys like this, want you to give them information and to help them be the best football players they can be. So they're not they're they're never afraid of hard coaching. You know, that's that's the easy part for them. And as far as the game plan, it's me and him find a way to put it together week in and week out. Uh it was tougher earlier because we didn't have an opportunity to go through a lot of these things that we normally would have got through with no off season. But we got halfway through the year. I think we learned each other and our us ability to uh, learn each other has put us in position to play in this game here, just having, I think I got a great understanding of who he is, the way he's going to see every concept now, and the way that he's going to see the guys that's out there with him on the field at the time that we're trying to execute that play. So I think we got a good understanding of each other, which has allowed us to always be in a positive from a play standpoint. All right, we're going to go over to Gene Frenette. <laughs> what's up, Byron? Hey, what's up? 
Uh, I'm very curious, uh, a, a couple a couple questions for you. Uh, what were you doing between the time you retired from football and before you joined Bruce as an intern in Arizona? Were you just enjoying the leisure of retirement, playing some golf? Uh, what were you What were you doing during that three, four year period? I was enjoying time being a civilian. <laughs> <laughs> I just, you know, it was initially it's fun. It's great, you know, because you've been in a meeting room for, man, I don't know how many years, you know, you've been in the meeting room. So initially it was great because I played, like you say, I played golf a lot at a 7.45 tee time every morning. But what happened is the winter would come. The winter would come <laughs> being in D.C. and it just was no more golf to play. And that's where you kind of got bored. Where, so it, where did you play at? What what golf course? Uh, a couple places up there. I don't want to say no names because I okay. said it before and a couple people showed up. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it's a few places that I play up up there that I love to play. I was playing every day. So I was playing every day. Monday through Thursday, just trying to work on my game. I really turned golf into football. I didn't have no structure other than golf. So I went at golf. I approached golf like I would approach the game of football. Got pretty good at it and then decided to get into coaching and understand coaching and playing golf does not go together. What did your, what did your handicap Last get one, down to? Uh, I was down to – I got down to like a six. Got down to a six. I was playing really good golf, though, but – I'll take that. I'll be a six. I'll take the six. I'll take that any day of the week because I can turn that into whatever. Just never know what I can do within the round of golf. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to go over to Sarah Walsh. Hey, Byron. Um, if someone told you on February 1st of last year, I don't know where you were at that time, uh, a year from now, you're going to have Tom Brady, you're going to have Rob Gronkowski, you're going to have Leonard Fournette, and you're going to be sitting here talking to the media because you're playing in the Super Bowl Sunday. What would you say? I wouldn't be as shocked as people would think. You know, I'm not really shocked at that that we're here in this game, to be honest with you. I think we had a good football team last year, a young football team that was learning how to win. I remember telling my offensive staff and just – at the end of the year last year, understanding, looking at all the free agents that were coming out. And I remember telling myself, if I'm a free agent quarterback, I'm coming to Tampa. <laughs> I remember saying, like, I'm coming to Tampa just to see the players that we had here. And I know the, you know, the perspective of, you know, the Buccaneers and all those things. But as a quarterback, you, you watch the tape, you cut the tape on, you saw the talent that we had, especially with the guys that were free agent quarterbacks. The guys that were free agent quarterbacks coming up, uh, I, I just knew that I just knew that this would be a nice spot. I, I wouldn't say that I thought that, you know, it would lead to the, you know, ultimately being in the Super Bowl. I think once you get Tom Brady, that's automatically uh, – an option, <laughs> right? Because I mean, he's, he's in it all the time. So we knew it was a possibility by having him. We knew we had to put the work in, though, to make sure we get here. We knew it wasn't going to be done by a bunch of talent. A bunch of talent don't get the job done. Uh, guys pulling together, coming together, committing to each other. We knew that would be the way that we ultimately have an opportunity to play in this game. And guys done a good job of doing that all year long. Over to Adam Teicher from ESPN. Hey, Byron, wanted to ask you about Tyron Matthew. As you know, the Chiefs line him up all over the place. You come, have you come across many players that are quite as versatile as he is, that can do as many things on defense as he can? And because of that, does Tom need to be any more aware of where he's lining up pre-snap than any other Chiefs player? I mean, being with Ty in Arizona, I got so much respect for the human being, to be honest with you, before I even get to the – the, the football player, the way he approaches, his leadership that he brings. Uh, I know how the guys in the locker room feel about him because I've seen him in the locker room. I know his commitment to the game. So before he's even before you even talk about the football player, you appreciate the leadership and the way that he carries himself on a football team. Then you cut the tape on and then you see the plays that I've watched him make playing or making Arizona. So we, we know what type of player Ty is. Ty is a great football player. Uh, great guy. Everyone would have would love to have guys like this on their team. I got so much respect 
for what he's about and his thoroughness and the way he go about the game of football. As a coach and as a player, you appreciate that. Uh, so we, we know how Ty feels and how he's going to approach this football game. We just got to make sure we're ready to play and make plays also. So, it, you know, it's a great football player, man. He's a great football player. I've seen him have a lot of success in this league. And he, I see he's up there doing the same thing. We'll go over to Jenna Lane. Jenna? Hey, Coach. Um, I'm just curious from your vantage point, because you were you were at this Super Bowl the last time it was in Tampa, and obviously the circumstances were so different with COVID-19. Um, how has it been different for you guys, aside from the fact that you're sleeping in your own bed at night? Well, the thing I think about the most, I, I wish that the guys, our guys can have the, the real experience of what it really is, having the opportunity to go to two Super Bowls. Just the experience is a little different this year. Obviously, we're doing it, you know, through video. <laughs> and so it's, 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 a, it's different than it's ever been before. But, you know, these guys get an opportunity that, to have this version of it. Uh, I would love for them to have been different years, different circumstances, so they can truly experience it the way that I experience it, because it's a unique thing. It's the thing you should enjoy. Uh, put in a lot of work to get this far and to have an opportunity to play in this game. If you're one of the last two teams to play in this game, this is the time to enjoy it. This is the time to let the world know who you are as a player and all the questions that come with it. They're all fun. And I, I wish they could truly experience it the way that I experienced it in the past, but I think this would do for the guys. Go over to Adam Kilgore. Byron, um, dur during those days when you were golfing and, and your uh, civilian lifestyle you were talking about, um, was coaching in the back of your mind? Was that something that you were thinking about even when you were a player maybe? Or like when did you sort of start thinking that you'd want to become uh, a coach? Well, B.A. always wanted me to coach. Uh, B.A. always wanted me to coach. And it was just something I just wasn't ready to do. I needed to get away. I needed to see what else, what the rest of the world was about. I mean, you got to understand, you're in team meetings and in football meetings for most, uh, almost all my life. So it was an opportunity to really just be a civilian. Like I say, just be a civilian. Now, during the process, I always talk to, I always talk football. I always, football is my life. Anybody that know me know how I feel about football. Me and B.A. would talk. I would tell him what I would see, like, really through through the TV because I, I had no understanding of what he was doing from a game plan standpoint. I just knew him, and I could see it through TV. So, it was those type of things. I've always continuously talked football, though. Talking to former players, talking to players that were still playing. We had an opportunity to talk to Ben, watch like the Steelers play, and talk to Ben about certain things. So it, I never really got away from football. I just was not in the meetings. Not in the meetings. I just had an opportunity to heal up and rest and get your body to feel great. So... Other than I, I wasn't really that far away from football, even though I wasn't in meetings and everything, because I still had communication with a bunch of guys that were still in the league. We'll go to Ryan Dunleavy. Hey, Byron, you hear me? Yes. Thanks. Uh, what does no risk it, no biscuit mean to you? And how, uh, how different is that than what other coaches preach? Uh, B, well, B.A. has no risk and no biscuit. I know what it means for him. I know what it means for me. It means the same thing for us. We just, you know, we just do it a little differently. You know, uh, it's really just attack. Put yourself in the best position to play. Be aggressive. This is an aggressive league. This league is about scoring. This league isn't, this ain't the same league where you ran the ball and got two yards here on first down. This is a different league, and the slogan fits perfect for the way that football is being played now. I mean, to give yourself an opportunity, to give your players the best opportunity to win, put them in position to win. And we just so happen to have players at the skilled position that's able to get at people, get at people downfield, get at people short, medium, long. We're just trying to get the ball to the open guy and make them defend the whole football field. So... That's my that's my interpretation of it. Uh, no matter what, empty like we say. Make sure I have nothing left. 
play your best, give all you got, attack, 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 and try to win the football game. We'll go to Rick Stroud. Rick? Can't hear you. Okay. We're going to go over to Lindsey Jones. It says I'm muted. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Sorry. It just be the host muted me. I'm my apology there. Um, I, hi, Byron. Um, I'm sorry if you got asked this earlier. I've been kind of po uh, Zoom hopping here uh, amongst your your coworkers here. But um, I was hoping. Do you do you have much relationship with Eric Bieniemy? Do you know him through kind of coaching circles? And what does it mean to you that there's two black offensive coordinators in this game, especially when diversity hiring has been um, such a major topic of conversation? Well, obviously, me, I've, been, I've been a big, huge football fan all my life. So I've been a huge fan since he was at in college. You know what I mean? The world knew who he was. EB, I didn't really meet him until I, you know, was an adult, really into coaching. Uh, but as as a kid growing up watching football, it was hard not to notice him, especially with the college career that he had, his NFL career. So I knew of him. Uh, I knew of him, had an opportunity to meet him as a coach. Uh, the fact that uh, hopefully one day we're not, you know, it's not such a big thing that two, you know, African-American offensive coordinators in the Super Bowl. But it is still right now, so it's something that we have to talk about. But all I know, he's a good dude uh, every time I've been around him. And uh, he understands the game well. Obviously, he puts that team in position to have success week in and week out. Uh, obviously, I think of Andy, I think of him, I think of Andy, appreciate but Andy, like I appreciate BA just having the opportunity to be around these type of guys, guys who view these guys as the way that they view BA and Andy, they view these guys as offensive gurus, geniuses and what they do. So it's a blessing that me and him get an opportunity to learn from guys like that and uh, get better ourselves. But he's, he's been good to me as long as I've known him. All right, we're going to go over to Rick Stroud again. Rick? Can you hear me? Hello? Yes, I can hear you. Yay! There you go, Rick. <laughs> I'm in it. Hey, Byron, uh, along those lines, I mean, Bruce Arians said that he was ticked off, he used more colorful language, as you can imagine, that you did not get an interview this year. And um, we know what the, what the uh, you know, only one African-American coach was hired. W were you upset about that? And, and why don't you think? I mean, all we ever heard was, hey, Offensive play callers. That's what the league is looking for, right? And then here sits you and Eric. Um, I didn't really have an opinion of it, to be honest with you. That's not really why I do it. You know, me being a former player, I really want to help these players be the best football players they can be. I really want to put them in position so they can shine and be the best at whatever they want to be. As far as the all the other stuff about getting interviews, I can't answer that question. There's no need to ask the people that's getting interviewed, why they're not getting interviewed. Uh, <laughs> I can't really I can't really answer that question. All we can do is try to do our job to the best of our ability. And the narrative may change time in and time out because hey, it, it, it this uh it is what it is. We just gotta make sure we just keep working, get better at what we do. Right, we have time for a few more. We're gonna go over to Scott Abraham. Hey, Byron, uh, this is Scott Abraham from ABC7 in Washington, D.C. Uh, good to see you as always. D.C., you know, baby. <laughs> good old DMV is going crazy about you. Um, and you you were obviously shaped as a player 